students, parents, coaches. My name is Julian Jenkins. I am a, a national speaker, a former college and NFL player, college at Stanford University, uh, NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Denver Broncos and scouted with the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm really glad to be able to spend some time with you here today. This workshop is for students and families that have an interest in playing college sports and finding opportunities to compete, getting scholarships. And I was obviously fortunate enough to not only play, but use sports as a vehicle to help get me into one of the best colleges in the country in Stanford University. I'm originally from Atlanta, um, and so braved the trail to come out west, uh, knowing that that was going to be a great opportunity for me and my family. Today, I want to share a, a good amount of information for you about the college sports recruiting process that may be different than what you've heard about the admissions process, um, but the, a lot of the principles still apply. I went through this process. A lot of your coaches have gone through this process and you're about to go through this process. So if this is something you're interested in, this is the workshop for you. Normally I would be there physically with you in person. I can't be doing that. We can't do that right now. And so this is going to be a great opportunity for you to take this information and do something with it. Learn a little bit, do a little bit, learn a little bit and do it a little bit. Now, I want you to be very thankful and grateful and thank someone from uh, your district, thank someone from your area, um, especially the organizers of this event and putting this together as well. There's some very simple processes when it comes to the college sports recruiting path, uh, but it also can be very difficult. I get a lot of complaints from parents, a lot of complaints from athletic directors that it's confusing to go and play college sports and get funding, get scholarships to play college sports. So that's why we do this workshop year in and year out. You guys in particular, high school students in the state of California, right? Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you've had difficulties. You had a season um, 2020 that was stripped away from you, pushed back, uh, a lot of you guys had shortened seasons, had to pick one or two sports to compete in, as opposed to some of you play two or three sports, and you're a little bit behind in recruiting. I don't want you to worry about that. I want you to take this information and work towards getting advanced, work towards getting into the type of schools that you're interested in, uh, that you qualify for, and taking these next steps after this presentation. There's three principles that I want you to think about. You can write these down. Uh, and this is being recorded so you guys can play it back again. I want you to focus on getting identified, getting evaluated, and getting activated. Get identified, get evaluated, get activated, okay? So getting identified. Somehow you have to get on some college radar, right? Through the admissions process, all of you guys are gonna be filling out applications, uh, submitting financial aid forms at the end of the year, beginning of, of 2022. And so you've got to get, just like you've got to get on the school's radar from an academic standpoint, you've got to get on the coach's radar from an athletic standpoint, okay? So it's good to start thinking about what are your target schools? What are your dream schools? What are your safety schools? So you got to start putting an academic and athletic game plan together. What's helpful is if you could also put a resume together. Coaches need to know um, your experience level. They need to know your stats. They need video uh, on your resume, they need to be able to evaluate um, your talent. The next step, you guessed it, get evaluated. Okay, so once you've been identified, you've got on the coach's radar, you need to get evaluated. Um, your counselors are great right now, and you should talk to them about how to get evaluated as far as academic fits. What are your stretch and dream schools? What are target schools that are a good fit for you? And your safety schools based on what you wanna study, what you wanna accomplish academically. Where around the country are you open to? You only wanna to go to school in California or are you open to schools beyond California? Schools across the country love California kids. Don't just limit yourself just to the state of California, okay? Now, where are you a good fit athletically? A lot of you may not know. Right. You may look at a uh, Cal Berkeley, you may look at Stanford, you may look at a UCLA, USC and say, I want to play there. But you may be a better fit for not only Division One, but Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA and community college level of competition based on your skill set, based on your size, based on a lot of different factors. Um, and if you don't know, you need to find out. Uh, I am a director at an organization um, that we work one on one with students, their families and coaches to help you figure out 
what types of schools you might be a good fit for. And the last thing is you got to get active in the process, right? It's actually a recruiting game. And so if you know the rules of the game, then you can play it. So once you've get, gotten identified and once you're getting evaluated, now you can start getting active, all right? What is it going to look like for you to talk to a coach uh, through email, through text, through social media? What should you be saying to these coaches? What should you be sending to them? Uh, how does academics come into play and how you should be applying to colleges versus who you should be talking to on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, right? So for you seniors right now, it is, uh, you know, September, and ultimately you've got months for, to convince these schools from an academic and an athletic standpoint that you'd be a good fit for them, okay? You juniors, right, you have a year, but you have to be expeditious about how you're going about this. And if you need help, uh, I work for an organization called Next College Student Athlete Guys, which I'll introduce you to. We've partnered um, with your schools for some time now, and we can really help you get online uh, so you don't get behind and so you can get ahead in what you need to know and need to do in recruiting and become as active as possible. I'm going to share my screen and share a couple principles with you guys that are going to be good for you to start uh, act, uh, actively learning and doing right away. And I think I need access to share my screen. As we talked about, guys, you have to have a game plan with all of this. This isn't just, oh, I hope, I wish I could play college sports. This is... I hope, I wish I could play college sports. I'm gonna to talk to my counselor. I'm gonna to talk to Julian Jenkins at NCSA. I'm gonna to talk to my coaches uh, and I'm gonna put a game plan together with me, my parents, my counselors, my athletic director, everybody who might be involved, my club soccer coach, my club basketball coach, everybody who might be involved needs to be able to help you uh, in this, but you have to take it upon yourself and say, I wanna do this. I will tell you, it's totally worth it. It was a game changer for me to put my hat in the ring and say, hey, coach at Stanford, hey, coach at Duke, hey, coach at USC, I want to play for you. Let me know what I need to do in order to be a good fit for your team. It starts with an academic game plan. Then you have to have an online presence, okay? Every single college coach, they're going to find you online before they ever come and watch you in person. They're going to see a video of you. They're going to see your stats. They're going to see your academic status. And they're going to say, is this student worth recruiting? Can I walk? his or her transcripts down to the admissions office and help him or her get into this school? Can I walk them to the financial aid office and help them get funding to compete at this school? Can I convince this family that we'd be a good fit for them long-term? Video is a cru crucial component of all of this that you need to start getting compiled, editing. If you already have it, it needs to go online. And then we talked about different levels of competition are meant for different levels of competitors, okay? Division one, D2, D3, NAIA, community college, different levels of competition. And then what's gonna be your best fit, okay? Based on your academics, based on your athletics, based on geography, who's gonna be a good fit for you comparatively to the schools that are out there looking for students? So you're going to see this QR code on the screen a couple of times here, guys. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds so that you can scan this QR code. You're used to this. You're doing it at restaurants. You're doing it at your school. Uh, you're doing it every day, and your parents are doing it too. What you're going to do is just take your phone and hover um, your phone over the QR code so that you can see uh, what's next for you. It's going to take you to a form where you're gonna fill out as a parent or as a student athlete, um, a, a, an online profile. That online profile is gonna help you compile all the information that you need to showcase to prove to these colleges out there that you would be a good fit for them. It's also getting you an opportunity to connect with me and my team where we can ask you those questions. Are you ready to start the recruiting process? Uh, are you currently having recruiting progress on your journey? Uh, do you know the next steps to getting heading recruiting? And then we want to activate your profile so you can be searchable for college coaches. So I took enough time here, but I'll give you another opportunity uh, at the end 
scanning this QR code, guys, is going to start taking you through your next steps. It's going to help you create an online resume. And whether you do it with us at Next College Student Athlete or anywhere else, you need to have a nice athletic photo that makes you look as good as possible, preferably in, uh, in your uniform or an action photo. Video needs to look good. Uh, it needs to showcase your best skill set. Um, and then your stats, right? What is notable uh, is a mile time in soccer. Is it your points per game, assists per game in basketball, right? Um, is it your best events in your times in swimming uh, and water polo? Uh, whatever it is that's notable, you want to put together online and in one place so coaches can track you. They can be able to uh, identify you, follow you, and then contact you. Academics is huge, okay? And it was a huge factor that helped build me confidence in recruiting is that I could get into the schools academically that I was trying to play for, okay? So I'm gonna talk about academics in general and what's kind of changed because of COVID. Um, NCAA Division I, Division II, NAIA, I will cover. Uh, the Division Three level of competition have a different set of rules, um, but I'll go through them as well. So NCAA Division I, right? Your, your Stanford, your Cal, UCLA, USC, Northridge, okay? They have, because of COVID, now an automatic waiver. Um, it makes uh, eligibility a little different, but there's some principles that still apply. What if still applies? 16 core classes, right? So a combination of history, English, math, science, and other core classes, uh, such as your college prep classes, um, your language classes. Um, you need to tally up with your counselor that over the course of four years, you're taking 16 or more of these core classes, 2.3 or higher GPA in those classes. Um, and then ultimately 10 of those classes, of those 16, need to be completed prior to your senior year, the seventh semester, meaning that if you have under a 2.3 GPA, you know, as you're going into your sophomore, junior year, you need to retake those classes because those classes get locked in prior to that senior year of schooling, okay? And then proof of graduation. So it used to be for the class of 2022, just like the class of 2021 last year, that you had to take the SAT and have a qualifying score, okay? The SAT and ACT have been waived only for the class of 2022. I don't know if they're gonna be waived, it's gonna be waived for a lot of schools for the class of 2023 and beyond. I don't believe so. So my point to this is that if you do have a chance to take the SAT or ACT, take it. Why? Because if an a, a coach is looking at an athlete that has the SAT and ACT or one that doesn't, who do you think they're gonna take? The one that has the SAT and ACT. So I do encourage you to take it even though it is test optional for the class of 22 right now. Division two, okay, if division one's USC and, U and UCLA, then division two, uh, Cal State Monterey Bay, uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills, uh, division two level of competition, 16 core classes, 2.2 GPA, and then proof of graduation, okay, core classes still apply, but even if you didn't have 10 of those classes locked in before your senior year, you still would be able to retake classes going into your uh, senior year and even the summer after your senior year um, to be credited. So that's the difference between D2 and D1. Uh, it's a longer period of time that you get to satisfy those core classes. NAIA, a lot of you guys may be familiar with Division Three schools, um, such as Whittier, um, University of California, Santa Cruz, UC Santa Cruz is a Division Three school, uh, but NAIA, you may not be familiar. In Southern California schools, such as Westmont, um, in Northern California schools, uh, such as Menlo College, NAIA level of competition, uh, smaller college campuses, 800 to 1,000 students, um, they're asking a minimum of 2.8, 2.0 or higher, graduating in the top half of your class, and they, for this school year, do not have a, an SAT, ACT qualifier as well. Um, you would register at Play NAIA um, for the NAIA. And for the NCAA, you would register for NCAA.org is what you would register for the NCAA.org. It costs 90 bucks. 
Uh, it is mandatory, uh, but you can get a waiver if you're going to take the SAT or the ACT. The timeline of all of this, when does this need to be done? Now. So if you're a freshman, now. Sophomore, now. Junior, now. Senior, obviously, now. Um, and I hope this diagram helps because as you're looking at this, as you look at basketball, women's basketball, the majority of women's basketball players are contacted by college coaches by the beginning of their junior year. If I'm looking at this and you're looking at this correctly, by the beginning of the junior year of high school, at most, except for maybe a, a little bit under 20, 25% uh, of potential college basketball players, high school basketball players that want to play at the next level are contacted by the time they are a junior in high school, okay? You can take a screenshot of this. Uh, if you don't believe me, call me directly. I have my contact information on this slide at the bottom. You guys can call me anytime. A good amount of students are identified before the junior and senior year, but if you are a senior, it doesn't discount you for recruiting, particularly if you're a good student. You're sitting at 3.0 or above, 3.5 or above. Uh, it makes you look better than some of the players that are out there that have even more of a skill set uh, and better video, more experience than you do, okay? So the time is now, even if you are a freshman or sophomore, you need to start getting your ducks in a row because you're gonna need to be evaluated prior to junior year, during junior, senior year. Uh, they're constantly evaluating talent to get the best talent possible. Where am I qualified to play? It's a great question to ask guys, is that even if you're not a great fit for division one level of competition, the D2s, D3s, and NAIAs of the country and of California, they're looking for you. They want you, particularly if you're academically motivated. You may not know where those schools are. You may not know exactly if they have your major, but they are looking for you, okay? And so what I would do and what I did is I looked at schools based on a couple of different factors. Academics, do they have my major, right? Athletically, Am I going to be a good fit to playing for that school? Maybe not right away, but at least a year after practicing and being a part of the team, I'm going to get a chance to compete. Division three. Uh, so you look at Whittier, right? You look at schools such as Occidental. Um, they're looking for highly motivated student athletes that, that uh, really are excited about the academic side of going to college, even more than the athletic side of it as well. The NAIA, very competitive, as I mentioned. Uh, but smaller school setting in the community college, guys. Not only a great destination, but a stepping stone if you did want to um, compete at the next level of competition as well. Recruiting realities, right? The reality is that there is a place to play for everybody that wants to play college sports. Let me repeat that. I truly believe there is a place to play at college, university. For every student in their family that wants to compete, there's a place for you to compete. OK, again, you may not know the name of that school yet. You may not know, um, you know, if they have a, a, an open slot with your name on it. But I would encourage you to find out. So what we do at NCSA and what I can do personally for you guys or my, me and my team can do, we can help you figure that out. OK, because if you look at this baseball breakdown of recruiting realities, division one level of competition. I live here in Oakland, the Oakland A's, the San Francisco Giants. You got to realize a right-handed pitcher that goes to play at Cal State Fullerton Division I, he's throwing 90, right? He's throwing at least over 86 miles an hour uh, with his, fat, his fastball velocity. Uh, a student that may compete at the NAIA level at Westmont, he may throw 76, 80. And so as I'm just looking at pitchers right now, but from a water polo, from a swimming standpoint, track and field, we have all of these documents and, and, and digitized so that you can see where you stack up. And then what we also do is you have a chance to talk over the phone and online with somebody like myself, and we can help you create lists of schools that might be a better fit for you than maybe the one school that you're thinking about that's you have to play at that school, you have to play at this school. If you scan that QR code again, I told you it would show up. It would take you directly to your sports specific guidelines. So you don't have to just trust what I say. You can trust exactly what the college coaches are say they're looking for. One of the last things here, guys, as I mentioned, is having an online presence, a resume, all right? The purpose of that, it, it creates a simplified opportunity for that college coach to get your transcripts, uh, to get your uh, academic and athletic accolades, uh, a schedule of where you'll be playing, your, your, uh, your stats, and a highlight video. 
Video has to look good. You have to jump off the page to the college coaches. It needs to be short, three to five minutes. A coach is not going to watch a full game right off the bat. They may request a video, a full video after they get a highlight, but your highlight video needs to show your explosiveness, your skill set based on your position. Uh, and it has to show your want to, your competitive edge, and it needs uh, to be and look good. Events, showcase the events you've gone to. If you've gone to a camp, you've got a chance this summer to go to a camp and event, showcase that. Your stats are important to showcase as well. And social media, okay? Now, ultimately through social media, you gotta look good, okay? And so a nice athletic photo, uh, you may only have this account for one year, two years of trying to showcase your athletic talent to these colleges. Nice athletic photo, your name, right? Not your nickname. But what is your name so coaches can know exactly who you are and be able to contact you? Uh, your class, what high school you go to, right? Your GPA, uh, what position you play, where your school is. Uh, a, a lot of college coaches may be familiar with your school academically, but they may not know you're on that team uh, because they, you haven't really kind of gotten on their list uh, to be able to contact you. Uh, and make sure you are using something that makes them easy to find you. If you're curious, go to other athletes pages, go to college pages, go to professional athletes pages, see what they put on there and mimic a lot what they've done. This has got to look good and you have to use the right language, right? Nothing that's disparaging to someone or some group of people. You have to make it positive, make it about your teammates, make it about your sport, make it about other sports on your high school campus, uh, and make it accessible. And the last piece, guys, is that now that you're going to obviously create your profile, um, you'll have the ability to be searchable by college coaches. There's a difference between NCAA, um, the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Every one of you needs to register with the NCAA. I would say today, if you want to play college sports, NCAA.org, okay? NCSA, uh, sports.org, the organization I work for, we've been partnering with your school district for years, uh, and we've also partnered with the State of California uh, Athletic Directors Association. And so they trust us not only to help you become searchable by college coaches here in California, but across the country, but so that you have a platform to contact college coaches. You can see which schools are a good fit. You can search schools by division, by your major, by whether or not they're looking for you in your position, whether you're a catcher uh, in baseball or an outside hitter in volleyball, you can find out this information. My contact information there right at the bottom of the page. And then I'd love to answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one. I have my phone number, this is my office number. Um, I have my email address. You can follow me on Twitter and you can go directly to our website. What I also have there is a QR code. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, um, being able to have this QR code and scan that, what that's going to do, guys, it's going to create an online profile for you, right? So you can go in and start picking dream schools, target schools, safety schools. Uh, and then it's going to get you actively communicating with college coaches. If you haven't communicated with college coaches yet, we can help you put together templates. Um, you can connect to those coaches through social media. You can fill out questionnaires and you can talk to someone. Someone on me and my team, former college athletes, former college coaches, um, current recruiting experts. Um, and then we're going to ask you these questions. I want you to start thinking about some questions you might want to ask us too, right? Because we're going to ask you, are you ready to start the recruiting process? And you might say yes, but I don't necessarily know what to do next. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to play, but I don't know what schools would be a good fit, right? We may ask you what you're recruiting progress and your journey is and you may say well you know what i've gone to a camp i've done this i've done that but but you know i want to do more and then what are my next steps right every single one of you has a social media account right whether it be tiktok whether it's snapchat instagram so if i had you connect with your friends you could do it in an instant right but there's sometimes some intimidation about connecting with the college coach the worst thing these coaches can say to you is no all right. No, we're not looking for somebody like you because we already have your position filled 
or no, um, you know, you may not be a great fit for what we're looking for now, but if you walk on, maybe next year you can get an opportunity. And then the last thing, um, you know, you're activating a free online profile. We do have premium services at NCSA, guys, but the opportunity right here is to create that free profile uh, that's really been um, the level setter um, and the identifier for college coaches for the past 20 years. My last thing I'm going to say, guys, as you guys are scanning that QR code, filling out that, uh, um, that questionnaire to get more information, is that it's totally worth it. Playing college sports was a game changer for me in my lifetime, me and my family. My mom did not have to pay $60,000 a year for me to, for me to go to college uh, because sports became a vehicle for me to getting there, right? So whether the school's willing to pay $1,500 a year um, or, you know, or, 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 or full, um, uh, fully compensate um, you for playing at, at you know at, the, at whatever level of competition you become a good a good fit for. I recommend you play, um, but it's going to take a little bit of work, right? It's going to take you learning a little bit, doing a little bit, and getting better every day uh, at it. Best of luck to you uh, this season, this school year, um, and if there are coaches uh, and or parents that are watching this, reach out to me directly. We have a lot of things going on with coaches so that you can help track your students' progress as well. Um, any counselors that watch this as well, you know, let me know uh, and, and we can uh, put something together for your students as well. Thank you guys. Best of luck. Have a great school year and good luck in recruiting.